Chinese simplified Chinese, Han Yu traditional Chinese, Han Yu pinyin, Han Yu, literally, Han language, or Chinese, Zhang Wen pinyin, Zhang Wen, literally, Chinese writing, is a group of related, but in many cases not mutually intelligible, language varieties, forming the Sinitic branch of the Sino-Tibetan language family. Chinese is spoken by the Han majority and many minority ethnic groups in China. About 1.2 billion people around 16% of the world's population speak some form of Chinese as their first language. The varieties of Chinese are usually described by native speakers as dialects of a single Chinese language, but linguists note that they are as diverse as a language family. The internal diversity of Chinese has been likened to that of the Romance languages, but may be even more varied. There are between 7 and 13 main regional groups of Chinese depending on classification scheme, of which the most spoken by far is Mandarin about 960 million, e.g. Southwestern Mandarin, followed by Wu 80 million, e.g. Shanghainese, Min 70 million, e.g. Southern Min, Yu 60 million, e.g. Cantonese, etc. Most of these groups are mutually unintelligible, and even dialect groups within Min Chinese may not be mutually intelligible. Some, however, like Shang and certain Southwest Mandarin dialects, may share common terms and a certain degree of intelligibility. All varieties of Chinese are tonal and analytic. Standard Chinese is a standardized form of spoken Chinese based on the Beijing dialect of Mandarin. It is the official language of China and Taiwan, as well as one of the four official languages of Singapore. It is one of the six official languages of the United Nations. The written form of the standard language, Zhang Wen Zhang Wen, based on the logograms known as Chinese characters, Han Zi Han Zi Han Zi, is shared by literate speakers of otherwise unintelligible dialects. The earliest Chinese written records are Shang Dynasty era oracle inscriptions, which can be traced back to 1250 BCE. The phonetic categories of archaic Chinese can be reconstructed from the rhymes of ancient poetry. During the Northern and Southern Dynasties period, Middle Chinese went through several sound changes and split into several varieties following prolonged geographic and political separation. Qian, a rhyme dictionary, recorded a compromise between the pronunciations of different regions. The royal courts of the Ming and early Qing dynasties operated using a Koine language based on Nanjing dialect of Lower Yangtze Mandarin. Standard Chinese was adopted in the 1930s, and is now the official language of both the People's Republic of China and Taiwan. Topic. Classification Topic. Most linguists classify all varieties of Chinese as part of the Sino-Tibetan language family, together with Burmese, Tibetan and many other languages spoken in the Himalayas and the Southeast Asian Massif. Although the relationship was first proposed in the early 19th century and is now broadly accepted, reconstruction of Sino-Tibetan is much less developed than that of families such as Indo-European or Austroasiatic. Difficulties have included the great diversity of the languages, the lack of inflection in many of them, and the effects of language contact. In addition, many of the smaller languages are spoken in mountainous areas that are difficult to reach, and are often also sensitive border zones. Without a secure reconstruction of Proto-Sino-Tibetan, the higher-level structure of the family remains unclear. A top-level branching into Chinese and Tibeto-Burman languages is often assumed, but has not been convincingly demonstrated. History The first written records appeared over 3,000 years ago during the Shang dynasty. As the language evolved over this period, the various local varieties became mutually unintelligible. In reaction, central governments have repeatedly sought to promulgate a unified standard. Topic: <inaudible> Old and Middle Chinese. Topic: The earliest examples of Chinese are divinatory inscriptions on oracle bones from around 1250 BCE in the late Shang dynasty. Old Chinese was the language of the Western Zhou period 1046 to 771 BCE, recorded in inscriptions on bronze artifacts, the classic of poetry and portions of the Book of Documents and I Ching. 
Scholars have attempted to reconstruct the phonology of Old Chinese by comparing later varieties of Chinese with the rhyming practice of the classic of poetry and the phonetic elements found in the majority of Chinese characters. Although many of the finer details remain unclear, most scholars agree that Old Chinese differs from Middle Chinese in lacking retroflex and palatal obstruents but having initial consonant clusters of some sort, and in having voiceless nasals and liquids. Most recent reconstructions also describe an atonal language with consonant clusters at the end of the syllable, developing into tone distinctions in Middle Chinese. Several derivational affixes have also been identified, but the language lacks inflection, and indicated grammatical relationships using word order and grammatical particles. Middle Chinese was the language used during Northern and Southern dynasties and the Sui, Tang, and Song dynasties. 6th through 10th centuries CE. It can be divided into an early period, reflected by the Qiyan Rhyme Book 601 CE, and a late period in the 10th century, reflected by rhyme tables such as the Yunjing constructed by ancient Chinese philologists as a guide to the Qiyan system. These works define phonological categories, but with little hint of what sounds they represent. Linguists have identified these sounds by comparing the categories with pronunciations in modern varieties of Chinese, borrowed Chinese words in Japanese, Vietnamese, and Korean, and transcription evidence. The resulting system is very complex, with a large number of consonants and vowels, but they are probably not all distinguished in any single dialect. Most linguists now believe it represents a diasystem encompassing 6th century northern and southern standards for reading the classics. Topic. Classical and literary forms Topic. The relationship between spoken and written Chinese is rather complex. Its spoken varieties have evolved at different rates, while written Chinese itself has changed much less. Classical Chinese literature began in the spring and autumn period. Topic. Rise of northern dialects Topic. After the fall of the Northern Song dynasty, and during the reign of the Jin Yurchin and Yuan Mongol dynasties in northern China, a common speech now called Old Mandarin developed based on the dialects of the North China plain around the capital. The Zongyan Yinyan 1324 was a dictionary that codified the rhyming conventions of New Sank verse form in this language. Together with the slightly later Mengu Ziyan, this dictionary describes a language with many of the features characteristic of modern Mandarin dialects. Up to the early 20th century, most of the people in China spoke only their local variety. As a practical measure, officials of the Ming and Qing dynasties carried out the administration of the empire using a common language based on Mandarin varieties, known as Guanhua, 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 literally, language of officials. For most of this period, this language was a koine based on dialects spoken in the Nanjing area, though not identical to any single dialect. By the middle of the 19th century, the Beijing dialect had become dominant and was essential for any business with the imperial court. In the 1930s, a standard national language Guoyu, Guoyu, Guoyu national language, was adopted. After much dispute between proponents of northern and southern dialects and an abortive attempt at an artificial pronunciation, the National Language Unification Commission finally settled on the Beijing dialect in 1932. The People's Republic founded in 1949 retained this standard, calling it Putonghua, Putonghua, Putonghua common speech. The national language is now used in education, the media, and formal situations in both mainland China and Taiwan. In Hong Kong and Macau, because of their colonial and linguistic history, the language used in education, the media, formal speech, and everyday life remains the local Cantonese, although the standard language has become very influential and is being taught in schools. Topic. Influence Topic. The Chinese language has spread to neighboring countries through a variety of means. Northern Vietnam was incorporated into the Han Empire in 111 BCE, marking the beginning of a period of Chinese control that ran almost continuously for a millennium. The four commanderies were established in northern Korea in the 1st century BCE, but disintegrated in the following centuries. Chinese Buddhism spread over East Asia between the 2nd and 5th centuries CE, and with it the study of scriptures and literature in literary Chinese. 
Later Korea, Japan, and Vietnam developed strong central governments modeled on Chinese institutions, with literary Chinese as the language of administration and scholarship, a position it would retain until the late 19th century in Korea and to a lesser extent Japan, and the early 20th century in Vietnam. Scholars from different lands could communicate, albeit only in writing, using literary Chinese, although they used Chinese solely for written communication. Each country had its own tradition of reading texts aloud, the so called Sino Xenic pronunciations. Chinese words with these pronunciations were also extensively imported into the Korean, Japanese, and Vietnamese languages, and today comprise over half of their vocabularies. This massive influx led to changes in the phonological structure of the languages, contributing to the development of moric structure in Japanese and the disruption of vowel harmony in Korean. Borrowed Chinese morphemes have been used extensively in all these languages to coin compound words for new concepts, in a similar way to the use of Latin and ancient Greek roots in European languages. Many new compounds, or new meanings for old phrases, were created in the late 19th and early 20th centuries to name Western concepts and artifacts. These coinages, written in shared Chinese characters, have then been borrowed freely between languages. They have even been accepted into Chinese, a language usually resistant to loanwords, because their foreign origin was hidden by their written form. Often different compounds for the same concept were in circulation for some time before a winner emerged, and sometimes the final choice differed between countries. The proportion of vocabulary of Chinese origin thus tends to be greater in technical, abstract, or formal language. For example, in Japan, Sino-Japanese words account for about 35% of the words in entertainment magazines, over half the words in newspapers, and 60% of the words in science magazines. Vietnam, Korea, and Japan each developed writing systems for their own languages, initially based on Chinese characters, but later replaced with the Hangul alphabet for Korean and supplemented with kana syllabaries for Japanese, while Vietnamese continued to be written with the complex Chu Nam script. However, these were limited to popular literature until the late 19th century. Today Japanese is written with a composite script using both Chinese characters kanji and kana. Korean is written exclusively with Hangul in North Korea, and supplementary Chinese characters hanja are increasingly rarely used in South Korea. Vietnamese is written with a Latin-based alphabet. Examples of loan words in English include T from Hokkien Min Nan Te Dim Sum from Cantonese Dim Tu Sam One and Kumquat from Cantonese Gam One Gwat One. Jin topic. Varieties topic. Jerry Norman estimated that there are hundreds of mutually unintelligible varieties of Chinese. These varieties form a dialect continuum, in which differences in speech generally become more pronounced as distances increase, though the rate of change varies immensely. Generally, mountainous South China exhibits more linguistic diversity than the North China Plain. In parts of South China, a major city's dialect may only be marginally intelligible to close neighbors. For instance, Wuzhou is about 120 miles (190 kilometers) upstream from Guangzhou, but the Yu variety spoken there is more like that of Guangzhou than is that of Taishan, 60 miles (95 kilometers) southwest of Guangzhou and separated from it by several rivers. In parts of Fujian, the speech of neighboring counties or even villages may be mutually unintelligible. Until the late 20th century, Chinese emigrants to Southeast Asia and North America came from southeast coastal areas, where Min, Hakka, and Yu dialects are spoken. The vast majority of Chinese immigrants to North America spoke the Taishan dialect, from a small coastal area southwest of Guangzhou. Topic. Grouping Topic. Local varieties of Chinese are conventionally classified into seven dialect groups, largely on the basis of the different evolution of Middle Chinese voiced initials Mandarin, including Standard Chinese, Pekingese, Sichuanese, and also the Dungan language spoken in Central Asia Wu, including Shanghainese, Suzhonese, and Wenzhounese Gan Shang Min, including Fuzonese, Hainanese, Hokkien, Taiwanese and Teochew Hakka Yu, including Cantonese and Taishanese The classification of Li Rong, which is used in the Language Atlas of China 1987, distinguishes three further groups 
Jin, previously included in Mandarin. Wei Zhou, previously included in Wu. Pinghua, previously included in Yu. Some varieties remain unclassified, including Donzhou dialect spoken in Donzhou, on Hainan Island, Huashianghua spoken in western Hunan, and Shaoju Tuhua spoken in northern Guangdong. Topic: Standard Chinese. Topic. Standard Chinese, often called Mandarin, is the official standard language of China and Taiwan, and one of the four official languages of Singapore where it is called Huaya, Huayu or simply Chinese. Standard Chinese is based on the Beijing dialect, the dialect of Mandarin is spoken in Beijing. The governments of both China and Taiwan intend for speakers of all Chinese speech varieties to use it as a common language of communication. Therefore, it is used in government agencies, in the media, and as a language of instruction in schools. In mainland China and Taiwan, diglossia has been a common feature. For example, in addition to standard Chinese, a resident of Shanghai might speak Shanghainese, and, if he or she grew up elsewhere, then he or she is also likely to be fluent in the particular dialect of that local area. A native of Guangzhou may speak both Cantonese and standard Chinese. In addition to Mandarin, most Taiwanese also speak Minnan, Hakka, or an Austronesian language. A Taiwanese may commonly mix pronunciations, phrases, and words from Mandarin and other Taiwanese languages, and this mixture is considered normal in daily or informal speech. Nomenclature <inaudible> 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 The official Chinese designation for the major branches of Chinese is Fangyan, Fangyan literally, regional speech, whereas the more closely related varieties within these are called Didian Fangyan, Didian Fangyan, Didian Fangyan, local speech. Conventional English language usage in Chinese linguistics is to use dialect for the speech of a particular place regardless of status and dialect group for a regional grouping such as Mandarin or Wu. Because varieties from different groups are not mutually intelligible, some scholars prefer to describe Wu and others as separate languages. Jerry Norman called this practice misleading, pointing out that Wu, which itself contains many mutually unintelligible varieties, could not be properly called a single language under the same criterion, and that the same is true for each of the other groups. Mutual intelligibility is considered by some linguists to be the main criterion for determining whether varieties are separate languages or dialects of a single language, although others do not regard it as decisive, particularly when cultural factors interfere as they do with Chinese. As Campbell 2008 explains, linguists often ignore mutual intelligibility when varieties share intelligibility with a central variety i.e. prestige variety, such as standard Mandarin, as the issue requires some careful handling when mutual intelligibility is inconsistent with language identity. John DeFrancis argues that it is inappropriate to refer to Mandarin, Wu and so on as dialects, because the mutual unintelligibility between them is too great. On the other hand, he also objects to considering them as separate languages, as it incorrectly implies a set of disruptive, religious, economic, political, and other differences between speakers that exist, for example, between French Catholics and English Protestants in Canada, but not between speakers of Cantonese and Mandarin in China, owing to China near uninterrupted history of centralized government, because of the difficulties involved in determining the difference between language and dialect, other terms have been proposed. ISO 639-3 follows ethnologue in assigning individual language codes to the 13 main subdivisions, while Chinese as a whole is classified as a macrolanguage. Other options include vernacular, lect regionalect, topolect, and variety. Most Chinese people consider the spoken varieties as one single language because speakers share a common culture and history, as well as a shared national identity and a common written form. To Chinese nationalists, the idea of Chinese as a language family may suggest that the Chinese identity is much more fragmented and disunified than it actually is and as such is often looked upon as culturally and politically provocative. Additionally, in Taiwan it is closely associated with Taiwanese independence, some of whose supporters promote the local Taiwanese Hokkien variety. Phonology <laughs> 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 
The phonological structure of each syllable consists of a nucleus that has a vowel which can be a monophthong, diphthong, or even a triphthong in certain varieties, preceded by an onset a single consonant, or consonant plus glide, zero onset is also possible, and followed optionally by a coda consonant, a syllable also carries a tone. There are some instances where a vowel is not used as a nucleus. An example of this is in Cantonese, where the nasal sonorant consonants per meter, and can stand alone as their own syllable. In Mandarin much more than in other spoken varieties, most syllables tend to be open syllables, meaning they have no coda assuming that a final glide is not analyzed as a coda, but syllables that do have codas are restricted to nasals per meter, n, the retroflex approximant, and voiceless stops, p, t, k, or some varieties allow most of these codas, whereas others, such as standard Chinese, are limited to only n, and the number of sounds in the different spoken dialects varies, but in general there has been a tendency to a reduction in sounds from Middle Chinese. The Mandarin dialects in particular have experienced a dramatic decrease in sounds and so have far more multisyllabic words than most other spoken varieties. The total number of syllables in some varieties is therefore only about a thousand, including tonal variation, which is only about an eighth as many as English. Tones All varieties of spoken Chinese use tones to distinguish words. A few dialects of North China may have as few as three tones, while some dialects in South China have up to six or twelve tones, depending on how one counts. One exception from this is Shanghainese which has reduced the set of tones to a two-toned pitch accent system much like modern Japanese. A very common example used to illustrate the use of tones in Chinese is the application of the four tones of standard Chinese along with the neutral tone to the syllable ma. The tones are exemplified by the following five Chinese words. Standard Cantonese, in contrast, has six tones in open syllables and three tones in syllables ending with stops. Topic. Grammar Topic. Chinese is often described as a monosyllabic language. However, this is only partially correct. It is largely accurate when describing classical Chinese and Middle Chinese. In classical Chinese, for example, perhaps 90% of words correspond to a single syllable and a single character. In the modern varieties, it is usually the case that a morpheme unit of meaning is a single syllable. In contrast, English has plenty of multi-syllable morphemes, both bound and free, such as seven, elephant, para, and able. Some of the conservative southern varieties of modern Chinese have largely monosyllabic words, especially among the more basic vocabulary. In modern Mandarin, however, most nouns, adjectives and verbs are largely disyllabic. A significant cause of this is phonological attrition. Sound change over time has steadily reduced the number of possible syllables. In modern Mandarin, there are now only about 1,200 possible syllables, including tonal distinctions, compared with about 5,000 in Vietnamese still largely monosyllabic and over 8,000 in English. This phonological collapse has led to a corresponding increase in the number of homophones. As an example, the small Langenscheidt Pocket Chinese Dictionary lists six words that are commonly pronounced as xi tone 2, xi 10, xi xi, real, actual, xi xi. No, a person, recognize. She, stone. She, she, time. She, food, eat. These were all pronounced differently in early Middle Chinese. In William H. Baxter's transcription, they were dzyip, zyat, syik, dzyek, dzyi, and zyk, respectively. They are still pronounced differently in today. S Cantonese, in Jiyutping they are SAP 9, SAT 9, SIK 7, SEK 9, C 4, SIK 9. In modern spoken Mandarin, however, tremendous ambiguity would result if all of these words could be used as is. Yuan Ren Chao's modern poem Lion Eating Poet in the Stone Den exploits this, consisting of 92 characters all pronounced she. As such, most of these words have been replaced in speech, if not in writing, with a longer, less ambiguous compound. Only the first one. 10 normally appears as such when spoken, the rest are normally replaced with, respectively, shi ji shi ji, shi ji lit, actual connection, ren shi ren shi, ren shi lit, 
recognize no shitu shi tu shi tu lit stone head shijin shi jian shi jian lit time interval shi wu shi wu lit food thing in each case, the homophone was disambiguated by adding another morpheme, typically either a synonym or a generic word of some sort for example, head, thing, the purpose of which is simply to indicate which of the possible meanings of the other, homophonic syllable should be selected. However, when one of the above words forms part of a compound, the disambiguating syllable is generally dropped and the resulting word is still disyllabic. For example, shi shi alone, not shitu shi tu, shi tu appears in compounds meaning stone. For example, shigao shi gao, plaster, lit, stone cream, shi wei shi wei, lime, lit, stone dust, shiku shi ku, grotto, lit, stone cave, shi ying shi ying, quartz, lit, stone flower, shi yu shi yu, petroleum, lit, stone oil. Most modern varieties of Chinese have the tendency to form new words through disyllabic, trisyllabic and tetra-character compounds. In some cases, monosyllabic words have become disyllabic without compounding, as in kulong ku long from kong kong, this is especially common in jin. Chinese morphology is strictly bound to a set number of syllables with a fairly rigid construction. Although many of these single-syllable morphemes z, z can stand alone as individual words, they more often than not form multi-syllabic compounds, known as c, cc which more closely resembles the traditional Western notion of a word. A Chinese c word can consist of more than one character morpheme, usually two, but there can be three or more. For example, yun yun, yun cloud, han bao bao, han bao han bao bao, Han bao bao han bao han bao hamburger. Wo wo, I, me. Ren ren, people, human, mankind. Diku de chu, the earth. Shandian shandian, shanda, lightning. Meng meng, me dream. All varieties of modern Chinese are analytic languages, in that they depend on syntax word order and sentence structure rather than morphology i.e., changes in form of a word to indicate the word's function in a sentence. In other words, Chinese has very few grammatical inflections. It possesses no tenses, no voices, no numbers singular, plural, though there are plural markers, for example for personal pronouns, and only a few articles i.e., equivalents to the, a, n. In English, they make heavy use of grammatical particles to indicate aspect and mood. In Mandarin Chinese, this involves the use of particles like la la perfective, hi hi, still, Yi jing yi jing, yi jing, already, and so on. Chinese has a subject verb object word order, and like many other languages of East Asia, makes frequent use of the topic comment construction to form sentences. Chinese also has an extensive system of classifiers and measure words, another trait shared with neighboring languages like Japanese and Korean. Other notable grammatical features common to all the spoken varieties of Chinese include the use of serial verb construction, pronoun dropping and the related subject dropping. Although the grammars of the spoken varieties share many traits, they do possess differences. Vocabulary <inaudible> 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 The entire Chinese character corpus since antiquity comprises well over 20,000 characters, of which only roughly 10,000 are now commonly in use. However Chinese characters should not be confused with Chinese words. Because most Chinese words are made up of two or more characters, there are many more Chinese words than characters. A better term for a Chinese character would be morpheme, as characters represent the smallest grammatical units, individual meanings, and or syllables in the Chinese language. Estimates of the total number of Chinese words and phrases vary greatly. The Hanyu Da Zidian, a compendium of Chinese characters, includes 54,678 head entries for characters, including bone oracle versions. The Zonghua Zaihai contains 85,568 head entries for character definitions, and is the largest reference work based purely on character and its literary variants. The CCCEDICT project 2010 contains 97,404 contemporary entries including idioms, technology terms and names of political figures, businesses and products. 
The 2009 version of the Webster's Digital Chinese Dictionary WDCD, based on CCCEDICT, contains over 84,000 entries. The most comprehensive pure linguistic Chinese language dictionary, the 12 volumed Hanyu Da Sidian, records more than 23,000 head Chinese characters and gives over 370,000 definitions. The 1999 revised Sihai, a multi volume encyclopedic dictionary reference work, gives 122,836 vocabulary entry definitions under 19,485 Chinese characters, including proper names, phrases, and common zoological, geographical, sociological, scientific, and technical terms. The 7th edition of Shandai Hanyu Sidian, an authoritative one-volume dictionary on modern standard Chinese language as used in mainland China, has 13,000 head characters and defines 70,000 words. <laughs> Loanwords Like any other language, Chinese has absorbed a sizable number of loanwords from other cultures. Most Chinese words are formed out of native Chinese morphemes, including words describing imported objects and ideas. However, direct phonetic borrowing of foreign words has gone on since ancient times. Some early Indo-European loanwords in Chinese have been proposed, notably mi mi, honey, shi shi shi, lion, and perhaps also ma, ma ma, horse, ju ju zu, pig, quan quan, dog. An a, 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 goose. Ancient words borrowed from along the Silk Road since Old Chinese include pu dao, pu dao, grape, shi lu shilyu, shilyu, pomegranate, and shi zi, shi zi, shi zi, lion. Some words were borrowed from Buddhist scriptures, including fu fo, Buddha, and pu sa, pu sa, pu sa, bodhisattva. Other words came from nomadic peoples to the north, such as hu tong, hu tong, hu tong. Words borrowed from the peoples along the Silk Road, such as Pu Dao, grape, generally have Persian etymologies. Buddhist terminology is generally derived from Sanskrit or Pali, the liturgical languages of North India. Words borrowed from the nomadic tribes of the Gobi, Mongolian or Northeast regions generally have Altaic etymologies, such as Pai Pa Pipa, the Chinese lute, or Lao Lao, Luo, cheese, or yogurt, but from exactly which source is not always clear. Topic. Modern borrowings Topic. Modern neologisms are primarily translated into Chinese in one of three ways, free translation calc, or by meaning, phonetic translation by sound, or a combination of the two. Today, it is much more common to use existing Chinese morphemes to coin new words in order to represent imported concepts, such as technical expressions and international scientific vocabulary. Any Latin or Greek etymologies are dropped and converted into the corresponding Chinese characters for example, Annie typically becomes fan, literally opposite, making them more comprehensible for Chinese but introducing more difficulties in understanding foreign texts. For example, the word telephone was loaned phonetically as De Lu Feng, De Lu Feng Shanghainese, Telephone Tulfo, Mandarin, De Lu Feng during the 1920s and widely used in Shanghai, but later Dian Hua, Dian Hua Dianhua lit. Electric speech. Built out of native Chinese morphemes, became prevalent. Dian Hua is in fact from the Japanese Dian Hua Denhua. See below for more Japanese loans. Other examples include Dian Shi, Dian Shi Dian Shi lit. Electric vision. For television, Dian Now Dian Now Dian Now lit. Electric Brain. For computer, Shoji 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 lit. Hand Machine. For mobile phone, Lan Ya Lan Ya Lan Ya lit. Bluetooth. For Bluetooth, and Wang Ji, Wang Ji Wang Zi lit. Internet Logbook. For blog in Hong Kong and Macau Cantonese. Occasionally half transliteration, half translation compromises are accepted, such as Han Bao Bao, Han Bao Bao Han Bao Bao, Han Bao Han Bao. Hamburg plus bao bao bun for hamburger. Sometimes translations are designed so that they sound like the original while incorporating Chinese morphemes, phono-semantic matching, such as tuola ji, tuola ji, tuola ji, tractor, lit, dragging pulling machine, or ma liao, ma liao malao for the video game character Mario. 
This is often done for commercial purposes, for example Ben Tang, Ben Tang Benton lit. Dashing leaping. For Pentium and Psi Bai Wei, Psi Bai Wei Psi Bai Wei lit. Better than hundred tastes. For subway restaurants. Foreign words, mainly proper nouns, continue to enter the Chinese language by transcription according to their pronunciations. This is done by employing Chinese characters with similar pronunciations. For example, Israel becomes Yi Se Lai Yi Se Paris becomes Ba Li Ba Li. A rather small number of direct transliterations have survived as common words, including Sha Fa, Sha Fa, Sha Fa, Sofa, Ma Da Ma Da Ma Da, Motor, Yu Mo Yu Mo, Humor, Luo Ji Luo Ji Luo Ji Luo Ji, Logic. Shi Mao Shi Mao Shi Mao, smart, fashionable, and Xie Si Di Li Zia Si Di Li, hysterics. The bulk of these words were originally coined in the Shanghai dialect during the early 20th century and were later loaned into Mandarin, hence their pronunciations in Mandarin may be quite off from the English. For example, Sha Fa Sha Sofa and Ma Da Ma da, Motor in Shanghainese sound more like their English counterparts. Cantonese differs from Mandarin with some transliterations, such as Shu Wa So 1 Faa 3 Asterisk 2, Sofa, and Mo Da Mo 1 Daa 2, Motor. Western foreign words representing Western concepts have influenced Chinese since the 20th century through transcription. From French came Ballet Ballet, Ballet and Shang Bin Shang Bin, Champagne. From Italian, Café Café, Café. English influence is particularly pronounced. From early 20th century Shanghainese, many English words are borrowed, such as gaoer fu, gaoer fu jayer fu, golf, and the above mentioned sha fa, sha fa sha fa, sofa. Later, the United States soft influences gave rise to dck disike, disike, disco, kayla kayla kelly, cola, and mini mini, mini skirt. Contemporary colloquial Cantonese has distinct loanwords from English, such as ka tong ka one tung one, cartoon, ji lao gay one lu two, gay people, da shi dick one c six asterisk two, taxi, and ba shi ba one c six asterisk two, bus. With the rising popularity of the Internet, there is a current vogue in China for coining English transliterations, for example, fen si fen si fen si, fans, hei ke hei ke. Hacker, lit. Black guest, and bokeh boke, blog. In Taiwan, some of these transliterations are different, such as hai ke hai ke for hacker, and bu luo je bu luo je for blog, lit. Interconnected tribes. Another result of the English influence on Chinese is the appearance in modern Chinese texts of so-called zimu si, zimu si zimuchi, lit. Lettered words spelled with letters from the English alphabet. This has appeared in magazines, newspapers, on web sites, and on TV. San Ji Shou Ji, San Ji Shou Ji. Third generation cell phones. San San. Three. Plus G. Generation. Plus Shou Ji, Shou Ji Shou Ji. Mobile phones. It Jia. IT circles. It. Information technology. Plus Jia Jia. Industry. HSK Han Yu Shuping Kao Shi Han Yu Shui Ping Kao Shi Han Yu Shui Ping Kao Shi GB Guo Biao Guo Biao Guo Biao Sif Jia Sif Jia Sif Cost Insurance Freight Plus Jia 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 Price E Jia Ting E Home E Electronic Plus Jia Ting Jia Ting Home W Shi Dai W Shi Dai Wireless Era W Wireless Plus she die, she die, she die. Era. TV zoo. TV watchers. TV. Television. Plus zoo zoo. Social group, clan. Who ours she die, who PC she die. Post PC era. Who who who. After, post. Plus PC. Personal computer. Plus she die, she die and so on. Since the 20th century, another source of words has been Japanese using existing kanji Chinese characters used in Japanese. Japanese re-molded European concepts and inventions into Weisei Kango, Heiji Hanyu lit. Japanese made Chinese. And many of these words have been re-loaned into modern Chinese. 
Other terms were coined by the Japanese by giving new senses to existing Chinese terms or by referring to expressions used in classical Chinese literature. For example, Jingji, 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 Jingji Keizai in Japanese, which in the original Chinese meant, the workings of the state, was narrowed to, economy. In Japanese, this narrowed definition was then re imported into Chinese. As a result, these terms are virtually indistinguishable from native Chinese words, indeed, there is some dispute over some of these terms as to whether the Japanese or Chinese coined them first. As a result of this loaning, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and Vietnamese share a corpus of linguistic terms describing modern terminology, paralleling the similar corpus of terms built from Greco-Latin and shared among European languages. Topic. Writing system. Topic. The Chinese orthography centers on Chinese characters, which are written within imaginary square blocks, traditionally arranged in vertical columns, read from top to bottom down a column, and right to left across columns. Chinese characters denote morphemes independent of phonetic change. Thus the character yi one, is uttered yi in standard Chinese, yat one in Cantonese and it in Hokkien form of min. Vocabularies from different major Chinese variants have diverged, and colloquial non-standard written Chinese often makes use of unique dialectal characters, such as Mao and Xi for Cantonese and Hakka, which are considered archaic or unused in standard written Chinese. Written colloquial Cantonese has become quite popular in online chat rooms and instant messaging amongst Hong Kongers and Cantonese speakers elsewhere. It is considered highly informal, and does not extend to many formal occasions. The Chinese had no uniform phonetic transcription system until the mid-20th century, although enunciation patterns were recorded in early rhyme books and dictionaries. Early Indian translators, working in Sanskrit and Pali, were the first to attempt to describe the sounds and enunciation patterns of Chinese in a foreign language. After the 15th century, the efforts of Jesuits and Western court missionaries resulted in some rudimentary Latin transcription systems, based on the Nanjing Mandarin dialect. In Hunan, women in certain areas write their local language in Nushu, a syllabary derived from Chinese characters. The Dungan language, considered by many a dialect of Mandarin, is nowadays written in Cyrillic, and was previously written in the Arabic script. The Dungan people are primarily Muslim and live mainly in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Russia. Some of the related Wei people also speak the language and live mainly in China. Topic: <laughs> Chinese characters. Topic: Each Chinese character represents a monosyllabic Chinese word or morpheme. In 100 CE, the famed Han dynasty scholar Xu Shen classified characters into six categories, namely pictographs, simple ideographs, compound ideographs, phonetic loans, phonetic compounds and derivative characters. Of these, only 4% were categorized as pictographs, including many of the simplest characters, such as Ren Ren human, Ri Ri sun, Shan Shan mountain, Hill, Shui Shui water. Between 80% and 90% were classified as phonetic compounds such as chong chong poor, combining a phonetic component zhang zhang middle with a semantic radical shui water. Almost all characters created since have been made using this format. The 18th century Kangxi dictionary recognized 214 radicals. Modern characters are styled after the regular script. Various other written styles are also used in Chinese calligraphy, including seal script, cursive script and clerical script. Calligraphy artists can write in traditional and simplified characters, but they tend to use traditional characters for traditional art. There are currently two systems for Chinese characters. The traditional system, used in Hong Kong, Taiwan, Macau and Chinese-speaking communities except Singapore and Malaysia outside mainland China, takes its form from standardized character forms dating back to the late Han dynasty. The simplified Chinese character system, introduced by the People's Republic of China in 1954 to promote mass literacy, simplifies most complex traditional glyphs to fewer strokes, many to common cursive shorthand variants. Singapore, which has a large Chinese community, was the second nation to officially adopt simplified characters, although it has also become the de facto standard for younger ethnic Chinese in Malaysia. The Internet provides the platform to practice reading these alternative systems, be it traditional or simplified. 
A well-educated Chinese reader today recognizes approximately 4,000 to 6,000 characters, approximately 3,000 characters are required to read a mainland newspaper. The PRC government defines literacy amongst workers as a knowledge of 2,000 characters, though this would be only functional literacy. School children typically learn around 2,000 characters whereas scholars may memorize up to 10,000. A large unabridged dictionary, like the Kangxi Dictionary, contains over 40,000 characters, including obscure, variant, rare, and archaic characters. Fewer than a quarter of these characters are now commonly used. Topic: Romanization. Topic: Romanization is the process of transcribing a language into the Latin script. There are many systems of romanization for the Chinese varieties, due to the lack of a native phonetic transcription until modern times. Chinese is first known to have been written in Latin characters by Western Christian missionaries in the 16th century. Today the most common romanization standard for standard Chinese is Hanyu Pinyin, often known simply as Pinyin, introduced in 1956 by the People's Republic of China, and later adopted by Singapore and Taiwan. Pinyin is almost universally employed now for teaching standard spoken Chinese in schools and universities across America, Australia and Europe. Chinese parents also use Pinyin to teach their children the sounds and tones of new words. In school books that teach Chinese, the Pinyin romanization is often shown below a picture of the thing the word represents, with the Chinese character alongside. The second most common romanization system, the Wade-Giles, was invented by Thomas Wade in 1859 and modified by Herbert Giles in 1892. As this system approximates the phonology of Mandarin Chinese into English consonants and vowels, i.e. it is an anglicization, it may be particularly helpful for beginner Chinese speakers of an English-speaking background. Wade Giles was found in academic use in the United States, particularly before the 1980s, and until recently was widely used in Taiwan. When used within European texts, the tone transcriptions in both Pinyin and Wade Giles are often left out for simplicity. Wade Giles' extensive use of apostrophes is also usually omitted. Thus, most Western readers will be much more familiar with Beijing than they will be with Beijing Pinyin, and with Taipei than T. I squared pay cubed Wade Giles. This simplification presents syllables as homophones which really are none, and therefore exaggerates the number of homophones almost by a factor of four. Here are a few examples of Hanyu Pinyin and Wade Giles. For comparison, other systems of romanization for Chinese include Guoi Romatsi, the French EFEO, the Yale invented during World War II for U.S. troops, as well as separate systems for Cantonese, Min Nan, Hakka, and other Chinese varieties. Other phonetic transcriptions Chinese varieties have been phonetically transcribed into many other writing systems over the centuries. The Fags Pa script, for example, has been very helpful in reconstructing the pronunciations of premodern forms of Chinese. Zuyin, colloquially Bopomofo, a semi-syllabary is still widely used in Taiwan's elementary schools to aid standard pronunciation. Although Zuyin characters are reminiscent of Katakana script, there is no source to substantiate the claim that Katakana was the basis for the Zuyin system. A comparison table of Zuyin to Pinyin exists in the Zuyin article. Syllables based on pinyin and zuyin can also be compared by looking at the following articles. Pinyin table Zuyin table. There are also at least two systems of serialization for Chinese. The most widespread is the Palladius system. Education <inaudible> 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 With the growing importance and influence of China's economy globally, Mandarin instruction is gaining popularity in schools in the United States, and has become an increasingly popular subject of study amongst the young in the Western world. As in the UK, in 1991 there were 2,000 foreign learners taking China. S official Chinese proficiency test also known as HSK comparable to the English Cambridge certificate while in 2005 the number of candidates had risen sharply to 117,660 by 2010 750,000 people had taken the Chinese proficiency test 
By 2017, 6.5 million candidates had taken the Chinese proficiency test of various kinds. According to the Modern Language Association, there were 550 elementary, junior high and senior high schools providing Chinese programs in the United States in 2015, which represented a 100% increase in two years. At the same time, enrollment in Chinese language classes at college level had an increase of 51% from 2002 to 2015. On the other hand, the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages also had figures suggesting that 30,000 to 50,000 students were studying Chinese in 2015. In 2016, more than half a million Chinese students pursued post secondary education overseas, whereas 400,000 international students came to China for higher education. Tsinghua University hosted 35,000 students from 116 countries in the same year, with the increase in demand for Chinese as a second language. There are 330 institutions teaching Chinese language globally, according to the Chinese Ministry of Education. The establishment of Confucius Institutes, which are the public institutions affiliated with the Ministry of Education of China, aims at promoting Chinese language and culture as well as supporting Chinese teaching overseas. There were more than 480 Confucius Institutes worldwide as of 2014. Topic. See also Topic. Chinese exclamative particles Chinese honorifics Chinese numerals Chinese punctuation Classical Chinese grammar Four-character idiom Han unification Languages of China North American Conference on Chinese Linguistics Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. Citations Topic. Topic. Sources. Topic. Topic. Further reading. Topic. Hannes, William C. 1997. Asia's Orthographic Dilemma. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN 978-0-8248-1892-0. Chu, Zigui. 2000. Chinese Writing. Trans. Gilbert Louis Matos and Jerry Norman. Society for the Study of Early China and Institute of East Asian Studies. University of California, Berkeley. ISBN 978-1-55729-071-7. RLG. Language Borrowing Why So Little Chinese in English? The Economist. The 6th of June 2013. Topic. External links. Topic. Classical Chinese texts, Chinese text project, Marjorie Chan's China links at the Ohio State University with hundreds of links to Chinese-related web pages, Mandarin Chinese children's story in simplified Chinese showing the stroke order for every character. On YouTube.